This is our 5973 GC mass spec system and this video is a more comprehensive description of a modification done over a decade ago in order to make the cooling fan for the diffusion pump more reliable and to help in the event of a power outage. So this modification is a wiring adapter that supplies the power to the cooling fan for the diffusion pump and also lets the instrument know what the RPM speed of the fan is. It's a non-factory modification and the preference here is if you're going to do a non-factory modification, have a plan B in case it the modification doesn't work out and so the plan B is to be able to go back to the factory configuration and with any sort of a change or modification we want to solve a problem or prevent a problem from occurring or give us increased capability that's why we're making the change the video layout is a brief explanation of a diffusion pump followed by a description of the components used in the modification and, it's, and the assembly of that and then an actual test of what happens if the fan slows down below a certain threshold and uh, we'll see that the heater kicks off on the diffusion pump. And to make the video more user friendly, right, they're, they're in the show more description box in the YouTube, uh, we'll, there'll be the time of the video for when these different segments start. So you don't have to watch the whole video every time if you don't want to. Alright, so diffusion pumps are over a century old in design and the first ones didn't have any moving mechanical parts. This one obviously has a moving mechanical part. It has a fan. Right? Um, anyway, the oil is heated. The oil vapors are come up and they're confined mechanically and then the oil vapors are then directed down into the side and then on the outside of the chamber they have some, like some cooling and they condense again and that's how it does the pumping and so you have a four pump hooked up here a r the rough pump mm -hmm. the mass spec would be up here and essentially you can think of this as taking it from say 10 to the minus 5 torque here to say 10 to the minus 2 right? and uh, that's the job of a diffusion pump is to take care of the generate the high vacuum up here for the mass spec and in our mass spec that system is at uh, 3 times 10 to the minus 5 torque and that's with the flow of about a mil per minute of uh, GC column. This cooling part of the outside is very important. If this is not cooled, then the vapors are going to come and then they're just going to make their way and they're going to go all over the place into the mass spec. It's going to be a mess. Okay. So having cooling is very important. So if you have water cooling and the water is flowing all the time, all right, that's that's the way they did it in the early 20th century. Nowadays you have air cooled and you don't need water flowing. But if the electricity is cut and that cooling fan dies, the heater is still nice and hot. You're starting to generate, you're still generating those vapors, and now you may not have sufficient cooling, and so you could have migration of the diffusion pump into the mass spec. You do not want that ever to happen. Never, ever, ever. So since cooling is mission critical for a diffusion pump to operate safely, reliably, and robustly, uh, it's nice to have some sort of a backup scheme. And 
And uh, what the wiring harness adapter does is let you operate the fan alone via uh, UPS if the power gets cut to the rest of the instrument. There's also a separate UPS for the rough pump. So while the heater is cooling down, we're not going to have diffusion pump oil migrating to places where we don't want it. And so let me describe how the components of this adapter. A uh, quick overview of the components used in this modification are, so we have a UPS, and so that will provide power in the event uh, that the room power, that the AC power to the room is terminated or cut off for some particular reason. And so the UPS is then connect, is connected to an AC adapter. Some people call them wall warts, and it, and it that AC adapter has a 24 volt DC output, 1.5 amps. Uh, and then on the output cable, we have a we spliced in a two wire DC connector socket. Now there's a separate two conductor cable, and this is what the modification is basically about. Uh, at one end we have a two wire DC plug. DC connector plug that will fits into here, and uh, at the other end we have a Molex three pin three pin socket, just like the socket that's in the electrical chassis for the instrument, mm -hmm. and also a three pin Molex plug, and th this plug is what's going to plug into the 5973 chassis Molex socket. And the only information that the GC mass spec is going to get from that socket is the RPM speed. Is it high enough to uh, keep the heater going? Let me start describing some of the components. Alright, so, uh, this is the fan assembly for the diffusion pump. Uh, this is the old one. And at the end of it, it has three leads. 24 volts DC is the red, uh, minus is the black, and the tachometer is the uh, yellow. And you have to be somewhat comfortable with taking the pins out of these things because what you're going to wind up doing is you're going to take a socket this is this would be the socket that's uh, in the chassis and you're going to make one that uh, you got in the wiring assembly you're going to use a, a socket you're going to use a plug and what you're going to do is you're going to wind up or what we did is you wind up supplying via the AC power adapter, the plus and minus, uh, the plus 24 volts and the uh, ground right, via the socket, and then on the plug, the, the plug is going to go into the, the other plug is going to go into the socket for the chassis and it's going to provide the uh, information to the GC mass spec main chassis of the RPMs that the fan is turning. Right. So uh, you have your typical Molex connectors. And the Molex connector has pins. And let me take one out. So one way is to, and this is just for demonstration purposes because we're not going to be using this fan again. And the pin comes out like this. All right. So. So, if you're uncomfortable with putting a pin at the end of a wire like this, uh, you're going to have to seek assistance from somebody who is comfortable. All right. So this is a, this is the part for the uh, 
a fan. It's good to have these will last about a decade, maybe somewhat longer. And it's good to have one on hand. This is mission critical for the GC mass spec system if you have a diffusion pump for high vacuum. Mm -hmm. And then the connectors, these typical DC connectors are, are like this. So this would be this would be a this would be a plug. And this would be a socket. And again, the actual connection is made by pins and sockets that are like these things. So again, if you're uncomfortable with this, with doing that, find somebody who is comfortable. The Molex connector and a five pack. They're they're relatively. They're certainly less than a dollar a piece. A socket. Uh, I got the components from Mauser. Uh, they're a pretty wide-ranging electrical supply outfit. So, and then the, the cable, uh, we'll take a look at that, uh, at, at the finished assembly. Uh, and let me go over the assembled components of this adapter non-factory modification. All right. So we have our UPS, and into the UPS is plugged. Right, this AC adapter is plugged into the UPS. And output of the AC adapter is 25 volts DC, 1.5 amps. Right, the fan is only drawing 0.3 amps, so this adapter is definitely not overloaded. And on the output side, and we have a output cable, and it makes it makes its way into the by the side of the mass spec. Mm -hmm. So let me take the side panel off. Side panel is off, all right. And the ends have been modified so that they fit into your tip into a typical. DC power connector assembly. Okay. So we have plus 24 volts, neutral, plus 24 volts. And so this is a typical, at least a two conductor cable. Okay. Makes its way around here, here, and then actually loops around the fan assembly. And so the fan assembly as it is shipped via Agilent terminates in this connector. So red is 25 is 24 volts, black is neutral, white is tachometer, RPM. And let's zoom in as to how this plugs in into the chassis assembly socket. Okay, so this is the plug as it has the fan from Agilent end. Right? This is our socket on our homemade cable assembly. Right? And then right back here where the green wire goes in, all right, that's to our assembled plug and then right back here is the socket and so the purpose of the green wire here is to make connections to the white wire to give the RPM information to the main unit electronics. If this plug here, the one with the green wire is taken out of the socket power is still being supplied to the fan, so the fan will turn and will cool, keep cooling the uh, diffusion pump, but the heater will turn off because the main system electronics are not getting that RPM information. So that's the rationale for going through this uh, non-factory modification, is to keep the fan turning in the event of a power outage, the heater will turn itself off, right, and the fan will run for 
certainly long enough to let the diffusion pump cool. All right, and uh, next we're gonna test to see what happens if the system gets the information that the speed of the cooling fan drops below some certain level. I'm not sure what the RPM level is. Um, the easiest way to do it is to keep the fan turning, but to unplug that socket that gives the information from the tack to the uh, main chassis. So as it is now, it's plugged in, it says it's ready to run, and if we check the high vacuum, right, 3 times 10 to the minus 5, let's go back over here, right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug Rocket from so there's still power and look at that. Let's see. That's been turned off and now it says vacuum, vacuum status. Uh, okay. It says system is in vent state, high vacuum pump off. That's what happens when you unplug it. The fan is still cooling, so everything's cool. All right, and you can see with the pump off, the right, vacuum is starting to degrade. Right. Rough pump is still on. Right. So let me turn, plug it back in. Okay. Vacuum, vacuum status. Okay, so now it says, all right, diffusion pump, actual heater is off. All right, so close, vacuum, pump down, make sure I have it. Okay, 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 okay. getting back to where it says to the vacuum status. All right, and so now the fusion pump heater is back on. It's hot. All right. All right. In the meantime, because right, well, that heater's been off, the uh, vacuum did degrade, but you can see with the heater back on, it's, gonna, it's starting back down again. So I'm going to Stop the video, and uh, I'll turn it back on in uh, five minutes. And uh, 300 seconds later, we're back to essentially the same value. So, uh, yeah, and as far as the vacuum status, all right. and there might be some discussion as far as okay, you have the rough pump two meters away. Is that going to affect four line pressure? Well, um, actually, four line pressure is pretty good. So, uh, uh, having that extra length of the tubing in order to trap any suck back from the rough pump is also a philosophy that we tend to follow here. <laughs>